only stupid people get dementia. At times, I even don't know what should I do. On their own at home. Sometimes they have nobody to talk to. What's wrong with you? You say already, you repeat. Some really need help. I cannot remember. Cannot be normal. When he was diagnosed with dementia, we all thought that it is just forgetfulness. We never knew that it is actually very painful. Painful to the extent that um, at times he would uh, flare out. When he is supposed to go out and, and there's supposed to be a planned time that uh, we meet someone, he will be sleeping and he doesn't want to wake up. And he will just say, I don't want to go. It is uh, sad at the same time because he could not do what he could do before. We need to get adjusted to his conditions. Of course, I believe uh, that my thinking is slowing. Uh, but generally, I still I am capable of going out to meet my friend, come back, take a train, change a bus, so I can, I can drive. I used to be the only driver when we go for holidays. Stephen is a happy-go-lucky guy. He loves to joke and his joke um, can really surprise you. In him, I can see someone who, in spite of dementia, still have a strong sense of independence. He wants to have his own autonomy. He wants to decide for himself what he wants to do and he wants to be heard. When I talk to Stephen personally, I Sometimes I tend to forget that he has dementia. And I felt that the way he's being cared for, the way he's being supported in this journey, makes a critical difference. family and then they forget then they talk again then the children will say what's wrong with you you, you really tell us really and then you repeat this really. that's how make them stop talking because you get scolding <laughs> what are you planning to make for me now do it for me <laughs> not big enough no? how many how many 20 18 20. Want to make 30? No lah, not too big. There was once when she came home, she told us that she had a blackout. So we were very, very surprised and we were very scared. So my sister suggested that uh, we take her to for a checkup. For me, it was um, a double whammy because just a few months before that, we heard that my dad only had six months to live. So it was very painful for me to hear that my mom was going to that. I'm not scared because I know my, my, my children love me. So we always interact to each other. See. And when I'm, they are not free or what, then I play on my iPad. Okay. All right. Thank you for participating. I'm in the um, rehab program. Who knows, maybe we started the program in this year, January, with six families. The objective of the program 
One is to empower person with dementia and carers to step up and share their personal story in the community. Second, by doing so, we hope to remove stigma and biases with regards to dementia. That's good because the, the old folks are behind. Mm. Then the front one is all the other. Yeah, more of empowering people with mental health conditions to speak up for themselves like, or advocacy in other means. Working with Voices for Hope participants, I see a lot of hope. So we focus on the remaining ability and not the disability. We also tap on their strength because many of them have wealth of experience, wisdom, their work experience, which they still can contribute a lot. Yeah, that's what we're hoping to change the perception of dementia. I just go down there, but there's nothing that I can do. Mm. So what do you mean like to do? Yeah. I walk to the where my house is. Very near. Very ah. near. So I walk up and down. Our children, they must have more patience. The first thing that my mom did when she went <laughs> was to actually talk. Okay, she started talking to the people with dementia and she started teaching them, telling them they have to talk. <laughs> and then what else did you tell them? Must play what? Play games. Uh, must play games. <laughs> So now we're going to have a relationship, but not too close, not too far. So we spread out, okay? You can afford to go a bit faster. So we are also working on our awareness now, right? Now as you walk, breathe with every step. The main idea behind Voices for Hope was actually to encourage people with dementia to share their stories and, and speak up about their condition openly. But I think the Asian um, culture is that we are more reserved. We are, we are not used to speaking up uh, publicly, we are not uh, used to sharing our challenges and our, our problems openly. So I think that was the reason why we thought it was holding back the people from dementia in Singapore to do that. And so we said, you know, in order to get them to do it, I think we need to provide that guidance and that uh, training for them to be able to come up, to speak. I mean, we can't just expect someone with dementia tomorrow to say, why don't I put you on stage and you share your story? I think it's not going to happen. Uh, without the necessary help and support and training behind it, they will feel fearful, they will feel um, embarrassed about it. So we wanted to uh, encourage that and, and, and see what we can do to help them. And so that's why the reason why we put together the Voices for Hope program. For Voices for Hope is that we start to build a small little community because there is a chat group. And with the chat group, we create more activities. And with more activities, you tend to open up. When you open, the other party do, do open. So I find that very helpful because I start to know even more things that may potentially happen to uh, Stephen as well. The funny part is that she forgot I'm a counter one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, 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 Before dementia, I was doing my house. How do I feel? Whether you like it or not, we have to accept it. The most important thing in my view is that the family must accept it. And some family must understand that you have dementia, you are not the old father or the old husband. This is uh, something I think many people don't understand and accept that your parents or mother is having dementia and instead of denial, I believe that is the worst thing. Before she was very confident, like she tells everybody she's the queen of the road. So she knows every road, she can go everywhere by herself. But when she was diagnosed, she tried doing that, but she found that she could not. We have to walk here. Ah, we walk here, we sit there. Slowly, ah. Today is Friday, right? 